Welcome. I'd like to call to order the Northampton Board of Health meeting. Today is Thursday, January 16th, 2014. The board members present are Cynthia Zubos, William Hargraves, Donna Saloom, Suzanne Smith, staff present uh, Meredith O'Leary, and Heather McBride. Um, just a reminder that this is a public meeting and it's being audio and video recorded. Um, we do not have one he anyone here for public comment this evening, so we'll go right into our agenda for tonight. Um, I first order of business would be to review the minutes from December 19th, 2013 meeting. Take a minute to read those over. Regarding the tobacco, I'm speaking for Suzanne Smith. Regarding the tobacco sale, it doesn't seem to me to be clear why Mr. Murphy wanted this to be the second, the first violation instead of the second. Um, a question as it doesn't seem to be clear why Mr. Ver, um, he didn't seem to understand why he didn't understand why it was a second violation. Okay. Yeah. So, I, I what I did, um, Suzanne, is in the first, the first that when the first explanation part, it says this. It, it it talks about the penalty. So for the first violation, and for the then for the second violation, and I can add that into Mr. Burke's statement as well. I just don't think it's clear. Okay. That there was a previous violation. Okay. Well, we can make that, okay? Uh, it, it, it describes the event that occurred. But the explanation of why he wanted this to be the first and not the second okay. is not clear. Okay, I'll, I can, I can allow that. What his that. rationale was well, behind it's, it's why. It's description of the first event. Okay. No. Okay, well we can we can we can certainly add that. If only a sentence that it makes that clear. Okay. That it that it's there was a previous event. That there was a previous okay. event on one day because that and was discussed. Yes, it was. Okay. And the outcome of that. Okay. <coughs> about the court case. Yes. It was dismissed because he did not appear. Okay. I think that's important to put this into context. Okay. So you're going to amend. amend the minutes to make clear that in fact there was a first offense yes. and that this was a second offense. Yes. And what the um, what happened with the first offense? Okay. Is that okay? If, if, if there were another situation if, where the store owner acknowledged that this was the second event. Okay. Oh, all right. Yes. Okay. okay. So, so make that clear. The dismissal. Yes. Okay. About the first event. Otherwise, I wouldn't think it would be necessary. But for this particular yes. appeal, okay. I think it's necessary. Okay. Okay. Absolutely. Right. I think actually you're clearer than you think you are. Okay. Um, okay. All right. Are there any other changes or additions? Revisions? To the minutes from December 19th. Can I make a motion to approve the minutes as amended in this discussion? Is there a second? A second. All in favor? Aye. Okay, so. Um, all right. 
<coughs> the next item of discussion is um, our tobacco regulations. And let's see, Meredith and Donna, did you have some public comment? Um, I did. Did you do that I did first? not. No, okay. I did it at the beginning, but I can um, certainly move to that now. Are you here for public comment? I'm not. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Okay, so the next item for discussion are the tobacco regulations and our revisions. Um, has everyone had a chance to review the proposed amendments to the smoke-free workplace regulations? So what I did was um, the first packet is the smoke-free workplace regulations. And the cover letter on top of that is just a reminder of the, ch of the changes, the significant changes. There might be, um, you know, just language changes. Um, but the significant changes that were made from our old regulations to our new regulations. And what I did was in red, I made a reflection on where you can find it in the regulations. So um, at our last meeting, one of the things that you had asked me to do was to include language, what language would look like around the municipal parks and playgrounds if you decided to go smoke free. If you won't find that in the regulations. I have, um, I've been speaking with Cheryl Sabara, who you've all met, about getting me some language, some sample language. And dependent on what you want to do, there are three samples right here. She said um, other communities that she's been working with, they set an effective date for their regulations, but they added an exception for parks and recs at, for a later date to become effective. So if we wanted these to go in effect, say, for May or June, we could put that in our regs as the effective date, but with the caveat, the exception being parks and rec to become effective, say, you know, June to that, or January 2016 or 15, whatever you want to do, pick a date. Um, the other way you can word it, depending, again, how you guys want to move forward, is um, if you want to talk about city-owned parks and fields, if you want them to be smoke free but have one designated or multiple designated areas where they can smoke, sample number two is language, how to word that in the regulations. And then number three speaks to the fact if you want to actually be specific which parks and rec areas are going to be smoke free and which are not. But if you were going to ban smoking in some parks and recs and not in others, um, you have to have a rational basis for doing so. And we'd want to kind of incorporate that somehow. So depending on which way you want to move, if you just, that's the language that uh, she said she has seen in other municipalities. Wouldn't you need that rational basis for number one as well, if we're saying some can start on 2014? Well, no, one is all or none. So, okay. so the, the regulations will be effective June 2014, but parks and recs won't be banned until January 2015. Okay. So that's all or none. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then number two is for designated smoking areas and parks and recs, so smoking will be banned except for these designated smoking areas and then three is if you were going to pick and choose because mm -hmm. I know we had questions about enforcement at like Pulaski Park and mm -hmm. and what have you. Right. Mm -hmm. And we also talked about somebody contacting the child's park person. So yeah and he said it's a privately owned park so that negates that from the, the regs. Okay. Is that correct? Counselor Dwight is who I contacted. David Murphy. David Murphy, excuse me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. And he's the chair of the board? He's yes, the trustee. He's the trustee. That was the impression that I got from the park manager. Right, and I just 
I sent an email to mm -hmm. Anne Marie Mogio to asking for clarification. Go see out. So there, there's, I just want to, mm -hmm. um, there is some kind of proof that Child's Park is a private park, other than Mr. Murphy saying it's a private park. Is there some type of... I guess we could ask him. Parks for, and Recreation. Yeah, I mean, I asked Parks and Rec to back it up, but I yeah. guess I can ask him for something. I don't know. Yeah, I'm just mm -hmm. curious. Because it wasn't clear from just yeah. the general bit of research that we did. We did do a, a search, mm -hmm. just trying generally to find if there was anything posted on Child's Park's website or anything mm -hmm. like that. But there's nothing. There's mm -hmm. nothing that I could find easily that mm -hmm. that. It has to be registered in the city. The owner has to be registered in the city. Right. Well, I didn't go as far as to contact the mayor or anything like that. Okay. Well, we could confirm yeah, that. Yeah, we, we can do that. Absolutely. Okay. <laughs> Mr. Murphy does know his real estate law. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm not, I'm not, yeah. I'm not yeah. saying it's just take care of the rest of it. It's good to have, it would be good to have that on file. Yes, absolutely. <clears throat> it, it seems to me that we could um, use one and two in a partnership I, with some modification. <clears throat> say that um, this regulation shall take effect on whatever day in 2014 mm -hmm. with exception of parks and recreation which will be in, in 2015 and then have <coughs> something about smoking areas if we want that to be true. We may not want that to be true. Mm -hmm. So what Suzanne is suggesting is combining one and two and adding into one that city-owned parks and fields, except in those areas and events specifically designated as smoking areas That's only if by the Parks and Rec. Only if we're in favor of having those smoking areas. Mm -hmm. If we're not in favor of having the smoking areas, then one is, is sufficient. Mm -hmm. Did I seem to recall the, the discussion from um, Mr. Connor, or Connor, Sean, who's in charge of the um, mm -hmm. yeah. park that quarter? Yeah, thank mm -hmm. you. Um, th that he seemed to indicate that they wanted the park to go smoke free without the designated areas. Am I interpreting that correctly? Is my That's the impression right? that I got. Yeah, and so mm -hmm. I'm thinking that. But he wanted a several year. He wanted to be able to phase that in over several years. Or, or a couple of years. Did he say right? several years? Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He said at least one. Mm -hmm. At least one. It's different than. Would well, prefer to because they do book two years in advance. Oh, okay. So, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so he wanted smoking areas mm -hmm. for. Yeah. Because it's not. Then. It's not only just the outside rec area. It's the garden house he's concerned with too. You know, there are weddings and events that are booked in there. That. Have, that would be affected. So if we went with that several year model, we would have to specify that. Well, could we go with one and that this regulation will take effect on June 1st of 2014, with the exception um, of city owned parks and fields, that which, is, which shall take effect 2015? Does that give us the two, does that give them the two years? Not really. No, but we'd have to do June 2015. Well, well we started this conversation. Well, yeah, you're right. 16. Yeah. Now, if you push the effective date beyond, uh, like Labor Day, mm -hmm. yeah, that would right give them this year, plus plus all of next year through August. Mm -hmm. It could be January 1st. Of 2016, just to pick something convenient for everything. 
for everything. My, um, from what I've heard from the tobacco folks, it's easier to <coughs> make a dramatic move once than it is to phase it in. So mm -hmm. you wouldn't want to see them put designated smoking areas in and then pull the designated smoking areas. So that's harder than just putting in place in the smoking policy period. Well, I think in Boston can do it, as they have. Yes. So, my, per my preference would be a single day. Okay. So, if we were to go that the effective date for the regulation would take effect, we're planning to have our public hearing in March. Is that what we talked In mm -hmm. March. Mm -hmm. So, hopefully, we would have this in effect in June, March. By the time it gets through, oh, we don't need to do anything. We could do April 1st. Mm -hmm of 2014. May, may I ask you Sure. Question? Are you suggesting that we not give here to, to Marks and Rex the, the, the mark that Oh, no, I think that we need to, I, with the exception. I was thinking uh, a single date beyond 2014. A single date for everything? Yeah. Give some ample time to warn. Educate. But that's that would be for the entire um, the entire regulation. That's my preference. It, the the attempt to try to phase in is going to be very difficult. But there aren't that many there, dramatic changes. It in would the be ranks. Yeah, we haven't changed that much. I would hate to see us put off. The alternative would be to exclude Parks and Rec from the reg as it's written and then do an amendment in a year or two. But, yeah. You don't want to? I don't want to go through the process of another second, of the second public hearing. I don't, we have, we have the will of the, of the, representatives who have met with us at the park. He's fully in support of it, but he's asked for a delay. And I don't personally don't have any problem accepting that one faction for the time period that has been requested um, and let everything else go, this is go into effect now because the rest of it is really uh, not that much of a change. There's no need for a second hearing if we do that. There, there is. We'd have, have to do another whole. If, if we do one date, here. there's only one here. No. No. If we put in here the effective date for, for all the other everything, with the exception of Parks and Rex, which is whatever date we have, we, we don't have to. one hearing for, for both situations. If we just set a date for June 1st of 2016, for example. It means that all the work that we've done over the past six months to update and modify the existing regulations around um, workplaces and public places, everything would be put back a year and a half, two years. Not acceptable. I would rather not say that. I'm, two years from now, who knows what kind of public support we'll have. I think we have an opportunity and have hashed through these so much over the past six months. I'd, I'd hate to put the whole thing on hold for two years. One year? Be my year and a half? June 1st, 2015? I don't have any, I don't have any problem whatsoever with accepting Marks and Rex for another day. That doesn't... That would be my preference. I don't see any downside for that because the implementation of that piece is very different than the modifications 
of what is existing. The rest of it is just modifications. The Parks and Rec piece is a whole new piece. And to give that some roll out time, I think, is appropriate. And I, I think some of the things that we definitely cleaned up this time that we don't want to put off are things like outdoor um, outdoor smoking areas, outdoor seating, um, some of the issues around private clubs, um, smoking bars. Um, I'm trying to think of some of the other things. One of the modified. big ones that would come into play here is we added um, a few words on the definition of smoking, and those words are um, or non-tobacco product designed to be mm -hmm. combusted or inhaled, so that's going to cover medical marijuana too. And that's right down the road, so mm -hmm. I think we it's important to take that into consideration. It just really cleaned up what we had already in place, mm -hmm. um, and I think that part of our rationale in doing all this was that there were some things that were not strongly stated that were huge changes. We haven't, I mean, there's nothing that is a huge change in this particular piece. I think some of the restrictions in the sale of tobacco product, products and delivery products, um, there are more changes. But I would hate to put this off for even a year and a half. Can I add and just put in this conversation in isolation a little bit, um, because last month I was talking about the um, um, public housing, mm -hmm. and I don't see it in here. I forget now. Does that not come in here? No. Um, it's going to need its own. No. If we were to include it, it would be in our reg. But you guys wanted Northampton Housing Authority to take the lead and draw mm -hmm. their own policy. Right, um, mm -hmm. but having, um, I think we also talked about um, the the delays that could indeed happen, and so if we were to put something in here, certainly we would want them to draft their own policy, but if we, and I know this is strident, but if we were to put something in here with another extended date, um, I don't want it to be in conflict with the parks, mm -hmm. pr pr putting a preference on a park or putting mm -hmm. a preference on public housing. Mm -hmm. And so I'm just wondering as we talk about these two things of extension and um, will our initiative of actually putting public housing in this regulation with an extension in anticipation of that revision or that mo whatever they're going to come up with, um, is that prudent? I think that we own it then, Ooh, and that's yeah, part of what so. we really didn't want to own if we didn't answer. have to. We'd really like to keep it with the housing authority unless they were unwilling to move. But I think that at this point we would be much wiser to put in place the draft regulations that we have here get it through public hearing, get it in place. I think that we would receive a lot more opposition and it would we would lose our ability to put these regulations in place and sure up what we already have mm -hmm. um, if we added that in. Do we have any updates on the Chris Bantham? Yes. Actually, I was sitting with Cheryl Sabaris all day today at a um, meeting and Chris Bantham got up and there are going to be the, and I'm very bad with my letters. Um, um, Department of Community. Thank you. CDHD. something like that. CDHD yeah. is going to be coming out before the end of the month with a recommendation to all housing authorities that they go smoke free and that they um, provide smoke free housing for residents in public housing. Okay. So um, my understanding from what Chris said today is that that is going to be by the end of the month. Okay. 
So that will give us the impetus to push hard. Mm -hmm. um, because one of the things that I heard after um, the meeting that you and Bill were at is that they weren't getting direction mm -hmm. from CHD. Mm -hmm. um, thank you. Um, from CHD, and they will be getting that. And there is great support for that from the state organization. So, Did they talk about implementation? Are they looking to um, make a portion of the properties smoke-free? or He no? did not mm -hmm. go into any of the specifics mm -hmm. on it. And I think that it may be in a, still be in a draft mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. format, so that he did not have specific language, mm -hmm. but that, that should be happening. Having said earlier, I was not in favor of multiple public hearings. Mm -hmm. I think the public housing issue is so important mm -hmm. and has such Suzanne is saying is that, in fact, that separating that from our existing draft, and that if in fact at a later date we decide to do that, that that is, um, I think there's going to be a tremendous amount of work that's going to have to go around that in terms mm -hmm. of educating and getting public support for it and working with the housing authority on making that happen. Um, but that we not, I, I would prefer to not hold up what we have now. Um, after all the time and work that we've put into it, not kind of walking this through and getting this in place. The, the worst case is we end up with much cleaner, much clearer regulations that are more comprehensive. And we have really um, done the, laid the groundwork that I think we're going to have um, for issues coming up around medical marijuana that is going to be hitting us very soon. The smoking is smoking. <clears throat> Would anybody like to propose? <clears throat> Are you okay with that, Bill? Mm -hmm. So where we are right now is taking the draft regulations as they stand, um, adding in the effective date for this regulation um, shall, uh, this regulation shall take effect on, we don't need to put a date we can in. We declare that at the, okay, at the meeting. With the exception of city-owned parks and fields, except for the, oh, city-owned parks and fields, period. Um, and we are talking, they've asked for two years. Mm -hmm. um, I think Bill made a good point that the parks are after September 1st. The, most of the, game, uh, the athletic fields are not being booked. Do they still the garden they house still book the garden about. house? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh. Because they book two years in advance for yeah. events at the garden house. So we would say January 1, 2016. The first date is going to be? To be filled in later. To be filled in after the public hearing. Okay. We're going, but we are going to put in a date for the second part. Yeah. Yes, to have two. September 1st. I need to wait two years on that. It's, uh, yeah, it's January 15 or 16. Yeah, it is. 15 or 16. Six, uh, it would be 2016. So. January 1. Uh, or, I, I, or, I'm in favor of that.
if they had made any forward motion on their own, that'd be something else. Mm -hmm. But in this case, I think he came to us in good faith mm -hmm. and had a good reason for, mm -hmm. for why he asked for it, but he asked not to delay it, but mm -hmm. because, of, because of the implementation issues he faces. Mm -hmm. and, and because of contractual arrangements that yes, they've already booked. So I think that um, it was, it's a compromise. Mm -hmm. And what we should do is communicate with them and let them know mm -hmm. that that is our recommendation so they can start putting that into their mm -hmm. um, materials as they're signing new mm -hmm. contracts and making them. Mm -hmm. um, I, I would like looking. to propose we are not voting on this. No. We're voting to take this to public meeting. Right. Mm -hmm. right. Right. As it stands right. with these revisions. Well, that's another reason why we can't put the date down. Mm -hmm. Right, and that's what's going to happen at the public hearing. At the public hearing, um, the revisions will be posted, the draft will be posted on the city website, and we'll have copies of the revisions at the public hearing. And what we do at the public hearing is that we don't comment back, we just sit and listen to public comment. Mm -hmm. and, and then you close it and you can have a discussion afterwards. Right. Mm -hmm. Just a, a, a question about, since we're talking so much about Look Park and its extension, um, and we talked a little bit about enforcement at some of the city-owned parks and, and the soccer fields and the ball fields mm -hmm. where parents can basically do that gentle, social kind of support. The Pulaski Park situation is a little bit different because it will probably fall on uh, the police department. And, and if someone has a complaint, probably call the police before they talk to their neighbor whose kid is playing soccer with them. So do we have an obligation to, well, not an obligation, but would it be um, um, to our advantage to just notify the police department? Um, or do we wait for the public hearing for all that to come out when we hear, how are you going to enforce it in Pulaski? And then we say the police and that sort of falls. and. Please have I think having a conversation with the mayor too. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. So that's your job, Mary. Yeah. How this all works. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. okay. Yeah. And I envision, um, you know, having signs made and posted in Pulaski Park, okay. and you know, so contact good. board of health, so we could triage any okay. calls. Okay. That's great. Mm -hmm. And then um, just a final point about Look Park. Um, would it be acceptable to smoke in your own vehicle? I, you're on the park. I mean, you're. I would say no. Um, I know. But I just don't know what Cheryl. Mm -hmm. How she would read that. I don't know. Mm -hmm. It's interesting because the hospitals have put in place hospital uh, smoking mm -hmm. bans, mm -hmm. and it includes cars. Oh, it does. However, yeah. I think that if you looked at most of the hospital parking lots, you will in fact find mm -hmm. people smoking in their cars, mm -hmm. and that becomes less over time and it, yeah. so much of this is about changing the culture yeah and i think that that is our goal i think that if someone was desperately in need of smoking and if they were in their car with the windows rolled up that would be probably a case where someone wouldn't be reporting it so it would never come to mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And hopefully that would become so unpleasant after a time that people would stop that too. Um, I would like to propose that we um, accept the current regulations as amended mm -hmm. mm -hmm. with the addition of the clause about uh, the uh, effective date mm -hmm. with the city park exemption. Mm -hmm. Uh, is there a second? Is that a proposal or a motion? It's a motion. It's a motion. Is there a second for the motion? Just a clarification. We're only talking about workplace. We're not into mm -hmm. the sale. We're going to have to go next. Okay. Okay. Um, is that seconded? 
I'll second that motion. Thank you. All in favor? So Okay. Oh, she's second. Yeah. I guess I second there. Yeah. She's second. So, as the draft regulations with the changes, mm -hmm. oh, the draft regulations as um, will be taken to public hearing with the next item for discussion, which is the regulations restricting the sale of tobacco products and nicotine delivery products, which we discussed several months ago. And there, since our last discussion, Meredith, have there been any significant change, any changes no. to those? Mm -hmm. It's just been cleaned up. Okay. Mm -hmm. And again, I, I did the same thing. I highlighted the significant changes and put the page and section which you can find them. Okay. And my understanding is that we're going to be taking these together. This is going to be one mm -hmm. public yep. hearing yep. for both pieces. So we've got two parts. We've got um, sale of tobacco products and nicotine delivery products, which is the biggest change to this, which is we're adding in. Um, now, I have a question. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Sales. Got it. Never mind. And one is smoking. So I'm wondering, I, w I wanted to be sure that... Um, never mind. I, this is smoking and this is tobacco products. Got it. And I was thinking of it in terms of medical marijuana. So... Right. So, so we're we are going to do Right. No, no. It's the same role. Yeah. No. <laughs> I don't think you're going to do that. For my clarification, Mary, we included the e-cigarette as being just the same as any combustible. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yep. Yep. I noticed that there seems to be an increase. I've seen advertisements for t on television. Oh, it's very popular. It's mm -hmm. trending. Mm -hmm. There's yeah. also a lot more science coming out, too, though, mm -hmm. about the dangers, which the, is very the, interesting. Yeah, I mean, it, to me, the issue of someone wanting to use a nicotine is personal, but keep it personal. Mm -hmm. I don't want to be seated next to someone who's using it and having it blown in my direction. Mm -hmm. That's, And I saw it the other night, Golden Globe. The Golden Globe Awards. I mean, I don't watch, but I watch the YouTube stuff. And <coughs> I saw okay, it. Glad you that. I don't spend hours and hours watching it. I just, I like to see the outtakes and the screw ups and everything. And there was a situation that just struck me as being, oh God, I can see millions of people watching this mm -hmm. and saying, well, it's okay. Let's go. Were they vaping in the audience? It was Julia, Julia Louis, Louis Drive. But she did. Oh. It was an, a, it okay. was an effect. <laughs> she did. It was one. It was a real thing. Yeah. No, definitely. Oh. Yeah. I think we've actually been out front on this. We've actually, mm -hmm. we previously included nicotine delivery products yeah. in our yeah. 2010. Last, it was already yeah. in there. I'm good with it. And this is also about anyone trying to buy under 18. Right. So this is about youth and, and yes. protecting youth from um, purchase. We'll move down. And, okay. And everyone will be part of that. I really like the card all. I'm excited we did that. Um, any concerns or can we um, I guess, I don't know if you guys want to talk about, uh, talk about the cap. Um, the 30? 34 is the number that we chose. Mm -hmm. And then um, reducing to 30 by July 2016. Mm -hmm. Okay. The current number again is 29. 33. 33. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But then um, once the farm ban takes place, Reduce it by six. Could, does anyone remember why we did July 2016? I'm just curious. As opposed to like January 1st, 2016. I was just thinking that if we were going to revisit tobacco and the parks for January 1st, 2016, might be 
good to do is due January 1st, 2016 on the on reducing the number of sales permits. That gives us two years. Mm -hmm. Is that agreeable? Yes. Mm -hmm. Get them in sync. Yeah. Tell me we don't have to talk about tobacco for two years? Except for housing. What will we do? I know. Oh, I think. This is always about yesterday. Well, um, I would move that we accept the drafts, um, the draft of the regulations restricting the sale of tobacco products and nicotine delivery products, with the one change that we would reduce to um, 30 permits, sales permits, by January 1st, 2016. Is there a second? I'm glad to second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Can we set a date? Let's now. What do we need to do to set a date for the public hearing? I have to um, advertise with the newspaper. Mm -hmm. um, Could we do it before certain? or after well, our meeting? Oh no, there's city council after our meeting. Every. We can just do it care? during a regular board meeting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We could do it the same day, yeah. which would be March twentieth. Yeah, you'd have to do it in March. We don't have time to do February. Well, I'd like not to be here for the February meeting, which I was going to discuss okay. with you after. Okay. Okay. March. Let's do March twenty. Public meeting. And by the time I get everything together and the language correct. Okay. That's fine. Okay. Great. Thank you all. That's hard work. Yes. Absolutely. And I think she will be pleased. Okay. Um, 2015 budget, Meredith. So I just want to give you a quick update. We got our directions from the mayor at our last department heads meeting. And um, good news is that we have to submit by the first week of February, a level service funded, a level service budget this year instead of the level funded budget. So what that means is, as in last year, we had to absorb, the department had to absorb any type of cost of living increases or increases through your union contract, where this year we don't have to absorb any of that. The only thing that has to stay level, fund, uh, level funded is our operating and maintenance portion of our, of our budget. Um, the uh, one thing that I'm going to ask for is to increase the nurses' hours from 30 hours to 35 hours, um, being full time. Mm -hmm. So everything else will remain the same. And one of the very pleasant things that has happened is that um, the mayor gave approval to increase the hourly rate oh, wow. for mm -hmm. um, the public health nurse, which was a huge issue mm -hmm. because. It was way below um, anything uh, a salary that would have brought someone. That was the biggest issue. Yeah, we with offered the, the position to two um, candidates, and they both declined because of the pay scale. Mm -hmm. And this is before the. This was approval. before the, and the rate that I was given is still in the pay range of the public health nurses position. It's just they've now granted you know me permission to increase it to a certain amount, which is great, which will be thirty dollars an hour. Mm -hmm. So we may have a chance to actually find someone. Which yes. Would be really. Mm -hmm. nice. Just started interviewing again this week. So you can't go back to those candidates. You go start. The I did. No. Okay. Mm -hmm. Good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's good news. Mm -hmm. um, last meeting, I presented to you that we had a house that um, I, I asked the Attorney General's office to come and inspect to see if it quali qualified for the receivership program, and which it does, so we're proceeding forward with that and um, keeping the mayor and our city councilor, Alan Seawald, in the loop. 
um, and Alan hadn't heard or wasn't doesn't know much about the receivership program. So what I did was I invited a couple representatives from the AG's office to come and give a presentation to the planning department, the mayor, the city solicitor, other people in codes and enforcement. Um, and you guys are all welcome to come too. It's going to be on January 31st at 10.30 in the morning in this room. Is that what the AHI presentation? Yeah, AHI. It's the Abandoned Housing Initiative is the official name of the program, also known as the Receivership Program. Right here. Here. Mm -hmm. At what time? 10.30. And it should take about an hour, hour and a half at the most. And this is the first time this program's been used in Northampton? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, department reports, I didn't get those done. Sorry, I'll have those for you February. Tonight at the City Council meeting, Alan Seawald, our city solicitor, is doing a presentation right in the beginning of the meeting on open meeting law and ethics. I'm not sure what it's about, but if you guys are interested, I know we always have questions about that. That starts at 7. seven. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We've included um, the meeting dates for 2014. I just wanted to check, did everyone receive um, an overview or a, the open meeting laws when you came on the board? Yes. Okay. We did. Mm -hmm. It's stimulating me. <laughs> I have a copy of there. Receive, yeah. receive the material, and then there's an online thing. Of course. Mm -hmm. of course. Yeah. Okay. And we're actually putting uh, together board member Bibles for everyone that will have all the pertinent information that you'll ever need, including, you know, the ethics and open meeting law so, and... Gotta swear on it. <laughs> <laughs> gotta swear There's you're no gonna mention. give it back. Yeah. <laughs> no mention, mention of church or anything. Could I ask you a favor, Heather? Yes. Um, for the next meeting, could you give us um, an overview for the board? Um, who came on when, what our terms are, yes. what the dates, because I am always very confused, mm -hmm. yes. By it feels like I've been here forever. And, 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 and it, all, it all changed. Yes. It all, it all changed when? We went to a five member board? When we went to a five member board. Oh, I don't realize that. The charter changed our yes. Term. Really? Oh. But, but I'll get clarification on that. Thank you. I would very much. That was. I don't remember. We tried to have that eliminated. <laughs> Mm-hmm. And we were confused <coughs> enough to do that. And it was drafted by the aid to, I believe, Senator Rosenberg. Right. Who oh, said, I who said that this is the way it's going to be. So, um, uh, uh, I don't think there was a problem to fix, but I think it changed our terms. Okay. If you would check on that, that would be fabulous. And I actually, um, this was certainly not appropriate when we started out with our three-member board because we couldn't do anything unless all three of us were here. Um, but I was thinking, and, and I had spoken with Meredith, that um, I think that it would be great if we could talk about adding a co-chair position. I think that um, one of the things I found when I had to be out of town for an extended period is that um, it would be great if someone else was designated as the person to be the second for um, the chair. So I'd love to have some discussion about that. I think it's a very good idea. Mm -hmm. It probably should be a senior member of the board. Is that an age or? <laughs> oh, just by, just, just by tenure. Yeah. I might qualify. <laughs> Just by age. I, I, or how we feel it. I definitely. I have to decline that opportunity because I am not reachable during the day at all. So. Um, well, and it's clearly going to be Joanne. She's not here tonight. <laughs> I, I, I don't know if Joanne's interested, and I don't think it necessarily has to be. Maybe not. And we don't have to do it at this meeting. But if you think about it, I'd like to think about it for sure. the next meeting. 
and yeah. you know you're not going to be there, or you're not going to be there. And I'm you know, having more and more evening meetings that I have to be at mm -hmm. for my work, but hopefully, I don't think I left in a family that I have to take care of. So. Mm -hmm. How about yourself? Except for, well, that's, uh, he's a big boy. We're the um, lowest on the list, aren't we? <laughs> yes. Can everybody hear Suzanne okay? I didn't okay. hear the first part. Okay. I think she's going to say something profound. No. I recall several months ago, we had a group that came to us that wanted to speak about um, pesticide reduction. Pesticide reduction. Mm -hmm. And thank you. And, and we, we said at that time that we were interested. We have not. And there have been several conversations since then. There was a letter that was sent by email um, from Lily Lombard to myself and to Meredith requesting um, an opportunity to speak to the board. And that is certainly something we need to get on our calendar. And at that time, when we, um, I did call um, I did respond and say that we were in the middle of revising our tobacco regulations and that was really the focus of our work right now mm -hmm. and that we would be glad to enter into here what they had to say but we needed to put it off till um, a future meeting. Um, we can certainly put it on the agenda for and we don't, we have an opportunity, what we, we can make a decision about whether or not we want to take this on as an issue. Um, but we certainly can have them come and do a presentation for us and get any questions answered. Um, when would you like to put that on the agenda? Well, February is open. February is open. Mm -hmm. Either that or April. You won't be here in February. Then I would, let's, would April be, because we will have a full board meeting in April with everyone here, as of right now. Well, and, we need and, April and to discuss the, the whatever has that but I don't know how extensive that will be. So. Or we could meet right after the hearing. Oh, okay. It's, yeah. We close it, close the public hearing, and then go into session. I Budget. suspect we will probably not have any people here. And I don't anticipate that it will be nearly as exciting as our hookah bar meetings. Uh, but you never can tell. You never can tell. Um, so that will be March, and then we can. April, correct? April. Okay. April 17. Okay. And you'll take care of mm -hmm. contacting her. And I, do I have. Everyone's blessing not to be here for the February meeting. I'd like to go to yeah, food board depend. illness on where training. You are oh, good. <laughs> What's it? Food board illness training. Yeah. Oh, Every three day. days. Go home. Yeah. Yeah. It's going to be something really. I hope it's someplace fun. fun. No. It's at the lab. Oh, I know. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a three day training, so she doesn't have to come we're home. Worcester County. But Jamaica Plain. Yeah. Jamaica Plain. Yeah. 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 yeah, beautiful Jamaica Plain. <laughs> There's a nice little park there. Yeah, there is. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. you can't smoke in it anymore. Wow, this is a new record for meetings. Yeah. Um, what else have we got? Anything else we um, have to address? She just flew right out of my head. Um, if you like me, it'll fly back. But... Okay. That's it on my list. All right. Anything um, significant around restaurant inspections, housing, hoarding? We um, will be taking the Emergency Preparedness Coalition on July effective 1st. July 1st. Mm -hmm. um, it, uh, yeah, hopefully it'll be a nice smooth transition. Um, Kelly, I can't think of her last name, Constantine, um, she does the bookkeeping for the coalition at this point, so she'll be moving over 
um, to Northampton. I think she works maybe five hours a week on the HPHPC mm -hmm. bookkeeping aspect of that. So, um, no, it's we just had a meeting yesterday and everything's still moving forward. Mm -hmm. Oh, I know the other thing about um, our space has been no, expanded. No, oh, oh, so much for that. Okay, we haven't gotten to final word yet. Oh, never mind. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, let me think. And is there anything that has been decided um, around um, animal control of us? No, nope. that's. I, I just think, air. yep, that's up in the air. Whether it's going to be um, July one. 2015 or 2016. Okay. It's definite that it's going to happen. It's just a matter of oh, when. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. And I think they're bringing the contract to Alan Seawald to see, you know, to get his opinion on that. Mm -hmm. Congratulations on that. Yeah, that's huge. Restaurant inspections are good. We uh, met our mandate. Everything has been done as it was supposed to. Mm -hmm. Great. They're looking in really good shape. And mosquitoes? Mosquitoes, yeah. Um, Believe it or not, I'm looking to talk to the state <laughs> about doing this project again okay. this summer, but expanding it and having more testing sites. Mm -hmm. um, I'm hoping with the emergency preparedness money to hire either Glennon or Adam or someone that the state's willing to train to do the testing for us. Um, but it's you know it's it's all dependent on whether or not they'll take in our specimens. Mm -hmm. so, but there's definitely a need. Not so much for West Nile virus. We know that's endemic. It's, it's the triple we were really concerned mm -hmm. about. And unfortunately, um, you have to be a, a state lab, or it, triple E is a biological threat, so not any lab can test for it. Mm -hmm. okay. Besides that, everything is going well. Any increase in flu? No. Norovirus right now. Norovirus. Yeah, we're seeing okay. pockets of that clusters of norovirus. Mm -hmm. um, so I just wrote a document up for schools, daycares, and institutions to let them know about that and precautions they should be taking and signs and symptoms that they should be looking for. Mm -hmm. And Karen Jarvis Vance is going to get it out too. Okay. And um, until we are able to hire a public health nurse mm -hmm. and get the person in place. There's a subcontract <coughs> with South Hadley's public, public health, health yep. nurse. Marge Bernard is her name. Mm -hmm. Marge. She'll be checking Maven every day and mm -hmm. my go-to gal for Bernard. Bernard. Mm -hmm. and we she's been with South Hadley for four that years now. At least that position is filled. Mm -hmm. I'm hoping the second week of January it's filled. Mm -hmm. I'm the forever optimist. So it, it's February. February. I mean, February. February. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> In 2015. <laughs> We're making everything 2016. All right. Bill? It was, a, it was sort of an open meeting question. Mm -hmm. And that's in advance of a meeting, and we know that someone's going to present it to us. And you, I probably should just know that. If I want to express an opinion, I should do it in a public meeting. But if somebody comes to present to us, mm -hmm. such as that coalition you just mentioned. Mm -hmm. <coughs> it's our opportunity to ask them questions. And one of the things that we can certainly do is we can request an opposing position to also come in and present <coughs> um, if we have questions. But this is certainly an issue that has um, many different um, sides. And I think that um, one of the things that we might want to talk about is do we, at the same time that we have the folks who are the proponents for um, changing the pesticides that the city is using, do we then want to also have someone from the Department of um, Public Works to come in and present the other side of that. And it's probably better to not do that at the same meeting because the cer we certainly don't want to get into um, that kind of crossed conflict. 
Um, but I think that we can ask the folks coming in um, the questions that we have, and then we can do research outside the meeting. We can form a subcommittee to further pursue looking into it and coming back and reporting to the board. Um, right. Or mm -hmm. we can do nothing. It's we can do nothing. Mm -hmm. And that's, we can, we do not have to make that, we, we don't want to um, hear a presentation and then have discussion. Um, do we even know what's being asked of the we board? We don't. Not really. Okay. No. So we don't know if they no. want a letter of support or something. Or if they want policy. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we don't know. Okay. Mm -hmm. So what we want to hear is what they have to say, what they would like us to do. And then I suspect that um, what we may want to do is form um, see who's interested in pursuing it further within the board and do more research and hear the other, I, I you know, get some more opinions mm -hmm. about. May the week schedule DPW for the following meeting? Well, I think we need to hear what they, they're asking for mm -hmm. before. Okay. I don't know what it is. Yeah, okay. even. But it's a good opportunity to ask questions. We already know. We already know. It's our responsibility as a board to research all sides right. and to make decisions based on hearing different perspectives on the same issue. Mm -hmm. So I would support inviting DPW. They may not be willing to do, the, do it, but I would, I would be willing to invite them. The following meeting is currently open. I don't know if anyone has an issue with that. Or at least get it on somebody's calendar right. mm -hmm. and say, we aren't sure if we need you to come in. We may that we'd love to hear mm -hmm. the city's side of this. Okay. 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 Right. I, May. I think for lots of reasons, it's good for us to anticipate ahead of time that this is a contentious issue. Mm -hmm. And that we, uh, I don't want DPW to hear that we had a hearing mm -hmm. when they weren't invited as well. Okay. I, I think it's, it's, it, it, it's better for lots of reasons to extend them the invitation before we even have the first meeting. Mm -hmm. So okay. that they understand. So we'll have them on the agenda for the following meeting. It'll give us an opportunity to hear both sides, and then we can have discussion from that point. Okay. In order to be fully informed. Fully informed. And we may want to do other research after that. And okay, I don't have any other words. I think that's it. All right. Make a motion to adjourn. I make a motion to adjourn the meeting. All in favor? Do we need to? Second. The time. <laughs> Done. And the time. And the time is 6.10. 6.07. Mm -hmm.